when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when, by his own evil desire, he is dragged away and enticed. Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. That is uh, James chapter 1, verses 13 through 15. Today we will only be looking in this lesson at verse 13. But I wanted to put it in context because there has been a certain amount of controversy about it, especially among those who are learned, people who, like me, have the ability to read a little bit of Greek and a little bit of Hebrew. And you start finding, oh, well, what about this verse? What about Hebrews 11, 17? And does God tempt? One of those, does the Bible contradict itself? But when we look in the context, we see how this word is being used here. What is James talking about here? He's talking about being tempted with evil. The word is used in different ways. It can mean to test, to try. In some of the earliest writings, it meant to try the way we use the word normally, to attempt something. You know, can I jump that high or not? But it came to mean to try in the sense of uh, when we talk about trying gold or something, where it is an attempt to find out, is this for real or not? Is this person capable or not? In that sense of to try someone. And and in that sense, the question comes, does God test people? Yes, he tests people. But does God test people with evil? And it becomes the classic case of what in the court system in America is called entrapment. And there is an issue that the law enforcement cannot entrap someone. They cannot put a temptation in front of someone that they otherwise would not fall for and get them to break the law so as then to be able to arrest them and convict them. If you are speeding, then you can be caught speeding and you can be convicted for speeding. But if a policeman, not in uniform, in an unmarked car, was harassing your car with their car to the point where you would speed up to get away from them, they cannot arrest you for speeding. It is considered entrapment, at least in an honest court, it is. And this is the concept here. God does not entrap us. So you cannot get off on saying, well, I wouldn't have done that sin, but God put me in a situation where I couldn't resist it. God pushed me over the edge. And there are some people that, that believe that God does do that. There are some people that believe that God, uh, you know, is trying to limit the number of people to get into heaven. And so he puts horrible temptations in their way and then, and then okay, well. You fell for it. Sorry, you can't go to heaven. You fell for that one. Sucker. No, God doesn't do that. And that's James's point here. God may allow you to face a temptation. I mean, after all, God allowed Jesus to face the temptation in the wilderness. Not only allowed it, he 
put Jesus in that position. But he didn't tempt Jesus. Satan tempted Jesus. But it was the Holy Spirit. It says the Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness. And there he was tempted. But God did not tempt him. God did not engineer the temptation. In a later part of this, in the next lesson, the lesson after that, we'll see James' insight into what's going on with temptation. Where does it really come from and where does it go? Right now, we need to get one simple truth out of this. God does not set up temptation in order for you to fail. And God does not set up temptation in such a way. God does not set up temptation. So you do not have the excuse, well, God made me do it by setting up this situation. Neither of these is the reality. <laughs>